The Unshackled Waves, episode 163. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company. I'm here with our Melbourne Bureau Chief, Morgan Munro. We've had a busy day, haven't we? We're pretty exhausted. Yeah, we absolutely have. It's been it's been an amazing day. So we're at the True Blue Cruise annual Aussie Pride Flag March in uh, Melbourne CBD. It's probably one of the biggest events on the, the Patriot calendar. Now, despite our exhaustion and not much sleep, we're, we're going to soldier on and do a debrief, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk a bit about the lead up because this is an event which is uh, months in the, the planning. It's organised by the, the True Blue Crew. We'll, we'll just go into a bit of history about uh, who they are. They were founded in the western suburb, uh, western Melbourne suburb of Melton, where uh, they were planning to, to build a mosque and also an Islamic uh, housing estate. So they were trying to turn it into an Islamic area, and that was pretty much how the True Blue Crew started. Yeah, so they were basically pushed to the edge by these crazy immigration policies. Like, allowing uh, a foreign ideology to build things on our soil is just absurd. Yeah, so that's how uh, uh, they started, and uh, they began this uh, flag march in 2016. This was the, the third annual uh, one, and they've pretty much uh, grown to be probably the most prominent uh, patriot group uh, in Melbourne. They probably uh, gained uh, a lot of exposure over the summer of 2017-2018 when uh, Victoria's African Youth Gang Crime Wave was uh, at its peak. Uh, that they, they were one of the, the few groups actually talking about what the problem was and they had a series of uh, crime crisis uh, meetings and uh, experienced a large uh, surge in their popularity. Yes, yeah, so they basically used something that no one else was reporting on or doing anything about and uh, managed to build a, a pretty big and successful movement around that, which is quite impressive. Uh, and of course, the, the United Patriots Front, uh, th uh, that used to be probably the most prominent pa uh, Patriot group, but uh, their uh, Facebook pages were, were deleted, I believe it was probably the beginning of uh, 2017. And uh, as a result, uh, the leadership of that, uh, they've decided to move on and found the, the Lad Society. That's right. And Blair Cottrell, he still can't catch a break. He, he, gets, he gets off one 30-day ban and then like he's straight back on another one. <laughs> I don't know why he keeps going back to Facebook. Yeah, well, it's it's just so big nowadays. So uh, well, yeah. We're slaves to it. That's it, we are slaves. Well, True Blue Crew, well, they're also at the mercy of Facebook. They, I, I keep telling these people they need to get a website, but they're doing pretty well on on Facebook. Uh, and uh, like I said, because of the, the surge in popularity uh, last summer, they started to roll out uh, nationally. Uh, so they, they, they set up uh, branches in other states, and there was actually simultaneous rallies in uh, Sydney and Perth today. That's right. And it, it is really good to see them in other states. Um, just having as many rallies as possible because i mean the us has it the uk has it we need more patriotism in australia we need to um sort of contribute to the same history that uh these other western countries are and it's it's looking pretty good uh, and of course if you want to hold a uh national pride uh, rally that's considered racist fascist nazi and so the 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 socialist left who seem to rule uh, melbourne uh, they always organize a, a counter protest they've been pretty quiet for for most of this year but they've been planning for this the the main group is the campaign against uh, racism and fascism they'd held a series of planning meetings at uh, trades hall and also had uh, events where you could make up your anti-fascist uh, uh, banner uh smash the fash was was their favorite one. Oh man i still haven't decided on my favorite yet but yeah you're right they haven't been too active from what we can see anyway we like there's always something going on behind the scenes they've always got something organized whether it's uh like to do with refugees or to do with policy stuff like that even on university campuses their presence is still pretty strong there and it will be strong until something's done about it now, we call them CAF for short, and you tried to go to a CAF meeting a couple of weeks back. Yeah, well, a few of, 
a few guys from the the nationalist scene tried to um pretty much just storm into one of their meetings we did a like we we did like a, a short video of it but yeah it wasn't really worth posting anywhere so yeah we just left it but it was funny just trolling them seeing how they would react and that it, it's pretty much how you would think like they just they, they'd try and shoulder barge you like do do petty stuff like that yeah uh terrifying stuff <laughs> absolutely terrifying uh, now, obviously, they're the, the main uh, anti-fascist uh, group uh, who, who leads these protests, but there was a, another page which seemed to relaunch itself, the, the Melbourne a Anti-Fascist Info uh, page, which uh, we know that the, they were serious because they, they went and got a WordPress website. WordPress. It is getting serious now. Um, yeah, that website, we had a flick through it. It got passed around the, um, the more nationalistic community. And it was pretty funny to read. I'm I'm a bit saddened that my face wasn't on there. Well, we still haven't put you on the on the about page. We need to because you haven't taken a, a proper studio photo. Yeah, I guess, but they can find photos of me just on the videos. Like it's it, it's silly. Maybe we should send them a link. Well, anyway, um, please we'll... dox me. <laughs> I've been doxed about four times because yes, they published a a thing on the unshackled saying do not speak to this media they are racist and fascist uh, sympathizers yeah one of them tried to get me arrested once for being a fascist news outlet um i didn't get arrested so mm. uh yeah oh it's it's we're, we're not in the totalitarian stalinist state yet <laughs> not yet that's a key word there yeah but they, it wasn't just us they uh we, we use docs because, well, docs is supposed to ruin your life, but so, so they did all the different Patriots group, groups and uh, also added in uh, Avi Yemeni and the, uh, the young conservative. He even got uh, docs, but they couldn't figure out his name. They couldn't figure out his name. Yeah. And they, they said that he grew up in Melbourne when he grew up in somewhere else. Mm. <laughs> so, so his name, that's for us to know and you to find out. That's right. Okay, so let's talk about the march itself. We got there. We tried to get there quite early. It's all, it's always getting to the city. That's that's half the half the journey because you've got to find the best way into the city, and then you've got to find a place to park. But we got there. Yeah, we did. And there was already a large uh, police presence when we were there. There, we we saw all the uh, police uh, response uh, units there. Uh, uh, later on, we saw them in their their full riot gear. Yeah, they had the arm thingies. But the thing is, um, there was a, a part in the, the rally where they had to climb over these big plastic walls and they were struggling because the, the leg armor was just so, uh, well, badly designed, I guess. It was pretty funny to watch. One of them actually fell over. Um, that was when, uh, that was long before we got to the actual plastic wall. But yeah, I saw it just in the distance, but we didn't get any footage of it, which is sad, but oh well. Now, even though it's a True Blue crew event, uh, there, there was a wide variety of other nationalist groups who attended, and it's good that they're all finally uh, coming together after quite a, quite a number of years of uh, infighting, which hasn't uh, helped the movement. So there was uh, obviously uh, Blair Cottrell and Tom Sewell, formerly United Patriots Front now, uh, Lad Society, there was uh, Infidel uh, Brotherhood uh, of Victoria, there was the S Soldiers of Idon, and uh, Neil Erickson of Cook's Convicts Future Now, he's a member of quite a, num a number of other, other groups. Yeah, and it was really good to see um, Tom and Neil start talking again. It was good. I think they're going to have a little box um, in a couple of weeks, so that should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Mm. But yeah, it's good to see that the right uh, is somewhat united in this case. And of course, we uh, obviously there were the mainstream media outlets uh, there, but we weren't the, the only alt media there as well. I mentioned uh, the young conservative, he was there. Uh, yep. Johnny Moore, who's uh, just starting out on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, Aldea Pina, she was, she was there. Um, and also we met uh, two uh, new people who'd come down from Sydney. Yes, yeah, so we had Baden Motti, who was an entrepreneur and political commentator, and also Gen Z Conservative, who's just starting out on YouTube as well. They're quite a good team. I've seen them on some videos, um, which I'm sure you can find on his website, uh, his YouTube, Gen Z Conservative, where they go around Sydney trolling lefties. It's, uh, it's quite, quite funny. They're a good team. 
Now we had uh, multiple cameras uh, there throughout the day and you decided to uh, venture to uh, the, the Antifa side, uh, <laughs> which was very courageous of you. How did you find it? Oh, there was heaps of cops there, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they obviously said, oh yeah, you're hiding behind police, you're hiding behind... I mean, fair enough, I was, there was a police line there. I mean, they could have still grabbed me, but they would have just been arrested straight away the police were pulling people from the crowd because they, they had obviously had face masks on or they were just suspicious or whatever um but yeah they they had a big go at me they said oh take a look at this guy know his face we're gonna be seeing him again well yeah oh well everyone well people who are watching the video can see your face it's not much of a secret yeah it's, it's really not a big secret <laughs> Uh, and of course, to to get us in the the, the mood for the march, there was there was a few uh, songs played as well. There was uh, "Live It Up," uh, "Great uh, Southern Land," which actually messed up our initial live stream because apparently Facebook found out that we were using Sony copyrighted music. Yeah, I'm not too sure what happened there. Was it a was it the fault of Sony for for getting that taken down? Because what I heard was on the notification was they complained about us and got it taken down what it said on the the live stream when i looked at it back is that that segment would be muted but uh, uh right. i only found that out after so i just thought safe thing is is just to <laughs> do a new live stream yeah definitely um and hey it worked out in the end thanks sony yeah uh there another maybe more more examples of corporate virtue signaling yeah we're gonna um we're gonna put something to get something special together for sony so uh you can look out for that yeah we haven't got a sony tv at this office no we and we never will <laughs> okay we never will never again okay so let's uh, let's talk about the the march itself now obviously the 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 chants were um were, were quite uh, passionate Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Yeah. <laughs> that was um now uh, kane miller who's the the head of the the true blue crew he obviously organized the event but he's he's quite media shy he's, he's more just a, a humble activist he has no interest in in being a, a media star he doesn't do facebook vlogs and that so he was happy to uh, let blair cottrell uh, uh do the uh revving of the crowd yeah, I wonder how similar he is to his character in Romper Stomper. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> Better not. Uh, now, and there, I don't think she'll want me to mention her name on there, but there's one lady who's very passionate about the uh, the chants. Uh, her favourite is Aussie Pride Nationwide. Uh, uh, what is the other the other one was rise without fear uh, we we interviewed her she got a souvenir of the the socialist alliance uh, a sign right. I, I won't i won't mention her here but she's she's a real uh trooper of the movement she uh, she's got she's got a loud voice and she uh, she does a good job yeah there was about a thousand uh calf members and they forgot like two signs uh, yeah. Oh, maybe they'll go back to their master and get some more. That's right. Yeah. And uh, now, last year, because uh, we went to the uh, Aussie Pride March in 2017, it was one of the first events that we covered in the field. The the speeches were made on the steps of Parliament House, but this year, uh, for some reason, mm. I don't know, uh, we weren't allowed there. So we reached the end of uh, Burke Street and Spring Street, and that's where the the Antifa were so there was probably a bit of uh, abuse exchanged for uh, five minutes <laughs> yeah yeah there was a very intense um, war of words there because the police that set um, that set the barriers up in sort of a, a V shape so there was one blocking off uh, what was that street that goes along Parliament yeah Spring um, Street Melbourne still yeah Spring Which, Street Spring Street so they had one blocking off Spring Street and then one blocking off Again, I'm new to Melbourne. It's uh, uh, Burke Street. Burke Street, of course. Yeah, so the, um, the Nationalists were marching up Burke Street and then, um, yeah, Antifa on Spring Street. And they had the, a tiny little gap which was just, like, walled off by police. And th there was just no way that you could, like, get at them to, like... There, there was one uh, confrontation. Uh, there was... Uh, 
uh, for some reason she'd managed to to get behind the other side there was this uh, lady with dyed uh, re uh, red hair she was yelling abuse and there's this uh, well-known patriot bluebeard who took exception to it and went up uh, uh, to her face now I I didn't see how it how it transpired but I saw the vision afterwards and she uh, basically like slapped his face and then he he tried to lose it on her but was restrained by police yeah I saw the slap um, it's really weird. Poor Bluebeard, like, oh, poor guy. But yeah, he was, he was restrained pretty quickly. But like, who was that lady? Like, was she even in Antifa? She didn't look like the sort of Antifa I've type. heard that she's a member of Socialist Alternative. Oh, okay. Mm. Which is, enough. yeah, uh, another organization we should name and shame. Yeah, absolutely. They're the ones who are on university campuses where they're petitions for refugees uh, LGBT, wh whatever, uh, stop racism. Yeah. If you're a uni student, you'll know who they are. Oh, you'll know exactly who they are. If you, if you see them, make sure you, uh, send them warm regards. And, uh, uh, Tom Saul and, uh, Blair Cottrell, they, uh, uh did, uh, some speeches. They absolutely uh, killed it with the speeches. Which was at the, at the tram stop. So it was, it was good improvising there just to have the, the, the speeches there. And I hadn't, I, I'm not sure if I've heard Tom, uh, give a, give a speech before, but it was quite good talking about why we need to, wh why we should be proud to, to be Australian and we need to mm. be wary of, of those who are trying to basically destroy Australian culture. Yeah, Tom's a real dark horse. Like, he's this quiet guy um, who does a lot behind the scenes for Land Society, but, like, once he starts talking, like, it's just, it's amazing the stuff that he can uh, get out there. He's a very smart man. And uh, Blair talked about, yeah, his 30-day Facebook man again, and also mentioned about his uh, pending uh, appeal for offending uh, Muslims, which, uh, which is related to the Bendigo 3 trial. He was uh, co uh, convicted under the uh, Racial and Religious Tolerance Act for that uh, beheading uh, video in in Bendigo when they were opposing the, uh, the, the mosque. So he, yeah. uh, he basic, basically calls it a thought crime because they're, yeah. they're prosecuting him because of well, his intent. The police must have some kind of machine that can tell exactly what you're thinking. I didn't think we were that advanced um, in 2018, but apparently right now they can tell if you're thinking about committing a crime and they can arrest you. So they've done that with Blair. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure what they've recorded from his brain, but hopefully it won't be used as evidence against him too much. <laughs> And uh, now, uh, after the, the speeches, we went back to the uh, Royal Exhibition Building uh, Gardens, where we uh, originally uh, met, and then the, the crowd uh, dispersed, and uh, f police escorts uh, follow, followed us throughout the, the city, because obviously the, the Antifa in remnants, they're, they're looking for an opportunity to jump or ambush. Uh, and you, you actually uh, decided to have another crack at Antifa. Well, we followed them to the state library and just started filming them. A couple of guys from that that were like behind me uh, just said a few things to them. They came up and started taking some photos, so I made sure that my hair was all straight. Um, and then we, yeah, we pretty much got to a vantage point uh, in TGI Fridays and filmed them from there. Tried to get some good footage. Um, there was about probably a hundred of them, maybe. Now everyone ended up at Fed Square orig uh, originally, which is the other side of the city. But uh, there were uh, the post march uh, celebrations were were cut short because there was a street performer there. He was juggling, but he was in a pink lycra leotard. And uh, Blair Cottrell took obsession to to this, basically saying, "What uh, what the fuck do you think you're doing, uh, you know, uh, performing like that in in front of kids? Uh, yeah, you, are you a pedo?" And uh, the guy was like really scared and was running around, "Police, police, police!" Yeah, I watched the footage after because obviously I was at the uh, the state we library. We missed it. We both missed oh, it. Ah, oh, poor, that's a shame. poor journalism. Yeah, you got you just got to follow the um uh, the stars the whole time. Yeah, that's what we've learned. Now got the got the whole thing. <laughs> Neil, yeah, um, but no, I mean after seeing the footage, I mean it was pretty funny. It's I mean you shouldn't be dancing around like half naked in front of kids. That's uh, as like a grown man. Obviously, that's that's quite grotesque. Um, but uh, what Blair told me is that the the guy um, in the leotard, like he was it a leotard? 
Oh, it was, it was some tight material. It, it was like one of those Borat things, it was, except it was pink. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, it wasn't as, uh, yeah, it wasn't a mankini, but like it, you know, it was it still like revealed that. a bit. It revealed enough. <laughs> um, so yeah, apparently he, like Blair walked past him and then he said to Blair, oh, do you want to fight? Like he made the offer to have a fight and then Blair was like, okay, and then walked back up to him and he starts lying on the ground and then yelling like, oh, this is what to toxic masculinity does. Very strange. Um, and then he got up, ran around for a bit, and then called the police on himself, or called the police in general, and then uh, ran over to the police when they didn't really come, because they didn't really take it too seriously. I, uh, the, the vision that I've seen, the, the, the police officer said, oh, he's got a permit from the, the, the city of Melbourne. and To uh, run we, around half naked yeah, in we, front we, of children. We, we, which begs the question, who approved that? <laughs> The city of Melbourne, mm. what are you thinking? Uh, now, uh, so, some people, I, I've had messages tonight, thought that uh, Blair was out of line, basically confronting this person in the in the manner that uh, that he did. I, no I, chance. I, I think calling him, like suggesting he was a pedo, was like going uh, going a bit far. But definitely, like this guy, like why would you like dress up like that? It's... Yeah, maybe saying a pedo was a bit far, um, but I don't think. Blair was out of line at all. The guy offered to fight Blair, and he tried to take him up on the offer. I mean, well, yeah. yeah that's only what I've heard. Yeah. It's all well, speculation. I'm sure there's... Everyone was filming that day. We'll, we'll, we'll see a bit more. I'm sure Antifa will post their version shortly. Uh, but the consequence of that is we all got kicked out of the Fed Square uh, bar area. Mm. Well, yeah, it's just a result of playing the capitalist system. I mean, Antifa, they've encouraged their members to give this bar one star ratings just because patriots are sitting down in the bar it's it's clever look don't get me wrong i think it's clever it's it's a dirty tactic but they got kicked out and the police were guarding bars like we were walking around trying to find one to get into afterwards but like the police were outside and we asked like can we get in and they're like nah and uh, uh, maybe they all had their phones out checking like the facebook reviews and if like <laughs> if, if if they thought patriots uh, approaching the the star rating goes down yeah yeah that's it oh god that's hilarious the same thing happened at the the pub where uh Arby and sydney uh had their had their pub night uh, mm. we managed to fight back with that and give you know, the the arcadia five star reviews yeah we can always fight back mm. um we had a good enough attendance on that night where we could just quickly flip the the average back up to to around yeah, four and, stars. Uh, the the anti-fascist info melbourne page they they had a live coverage of this is where the patriots are at now this is where they've gone to now yeah so basically i got footage of them as well not sure if it was on the live feed but it was basically there was about three or four guys just trailing behind the the police line um after like the block of of nationalists had moved like there were, there were these four guys just trailing behind i approached them with neil and we just did a bit of trolling they didn't really say anything to us but yeah you can tell these guys are like tweeting on their phones or they're they're on the antifa page these are the guys who run the page we've got footage of them um because they were um saying the locations of where uh, the nationalists were moving next again it's look it's a clever tactic um but yeah just hilarious confronting them and getting nothing out of it i love how apparently the one star review it's gonna like ruin a business well it, it has an impact a small impact but yeah i mean it's that's just how capitalism works and they're using the system to try and fight the system yeah, so that made it quite an uh, eventful end to, to the march yeah or we should talk about the um the guy who got arrested there was oh, apparently that, that, that was the token arrest. That was the one arrest. It was some um, dark-skinned gentleman, and he tried to throw a punch at one of our friends, um, one of our female friends, um, and then he just got grabbed by the cops straight away. And they, like, there was about 20 cops there, all in, like, the crazy, um, the, the arm mm, yeah. uh, protection. Um, and they, they shoved him onto the floor. We got some footage. We, we had a laugh at him, uh, poor guy. Uh, then there was about, I don't know, well, all these 20 cops sort of like lifted him up and they were like walking him towards the the train or to wherever they're going to put him into custody. Um, 
And then, like, he goes and tries to hurl another kick at one of the other nationalists. And they just grab him straight away. They shove him back onto the floor. And then they lift him up, like, two cops on each leg and just, like, walk him, like, off the scene. It was hilarious. And apparently members of his family were saying, oh, I'll release him. Like, ah, he's a victim. Let him go. Let him go. He didn't do nothing. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) As the meme goes. Now, we should uh, reflect uh, finally on the the overall uh, march and... Uh, we we have to be honest. The numbers were very poor. Yeah, it, like the the Patriot side was, yeah, it was quite poor. But it it makes sense because they're like it, it's there's going to be conflict there, and these people have jobs, they have lives that, that they don't want them to be ruined. Because Antifa and the police they go around filming, and even like the unshackled as well. Hmm. We get them all on film. So if friends, family, employers, um, potential. Um, uh, wives or husbands see that. Uh, I, I was speaking to, to one uh, gentleman uh, beforehand saying uh, saying that uh, uh, a few years back uh, the Antifa people rang up uh, his employer and tried to get uh, him mm. fired and he basically had to basically negotiate to save his job, which he's still got, thankfully. Yeah, thankfully, but um, that's one of the lucky cases. A lot of people have been fired. Some people are lucky, um, like myself we'd run our own businesses and we can't really fire ourselves for disagreeing with our own views so that's a plus there and uh, after today where do you think the the patriot movement is at obviously it's 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 much stronger than it once in terms of of unity there used to be in the old days a lot of conflict but yeah the yeah like i said the the numbers for today there's because Australians on the whole are, pa- are patriotic. Uh, you, you look at the polls, yeah. the uh, majority of Australians support Australia Day, uh, Australian values, yet there, there's still this uh, reluctance to, to demonstrate it on the street. Now, I know that these rallies, you obvious, obviously you need to be in a certain sort of mindset that we need to retake the streets because, mm. especially in Melbourne, the, the left dominate. Uh, they, they hold all their, like I mentioned before, their refugee uh, uh, rallies, and they're, they're really good at getting the numbers out. And sadly, that's that's what the politicians fear. They fear, like they see the the left or the the trade union movement uh, with a rally, and they say, "Oh shit, we've got to pay attention to these people." But the, the, sadly, the politicians uh, are not going to listen uh, to uh, the nationalist movement after today. No, of course not. Um... So the thing is, yeah, Australians, they're, they're pretty patriotic. They're fairly culturally aware. Um, but they just don't, like you said, they need to have that fighting spirit. And to have that fighting spirit, they need to realize that there is a problem. And if you look at countries in Europe who are voting in uh, populist politicians who are anti-immigration, I've spoken to a few of them, just random people from hostels and... They're all normal guys. They're all just normal people. They're not really political, but they actually see immigration as a problem and they're normal guys. Um, so it, it shows like once once it does become a more visible problem in more communities than it already is, the, the voters' mindset will change. So that's something to think about. It's always a case of things have to get really bad before people start to wake up. And obviously in Europe... Uh, it's it's getting to that stage, and Amer- Americans traditionally have uh, basically been uh, more. <laughs> they they don't put up with shit. Yeah, and America is also a lot uh, a much larger country, and like a lot of the immigrants go into the cities over there. Like it's not so much in the country where there's more of a right wing presence or a more of a a nationalistic uh presence whereas in europe like the countries are smaller they're very like all the the towns and cities are very much uh, a lot closer to each other so it would be easier for them to see all all the hardships or it would be easier for them to to witness the effects of mass immigration and if you look at videos online my god like you see all these people clearly from africa speaking fluent italian but they're just going crazy like they're, they're storm onto buses and attack people on the buses they just attack people everywhere they it's honestly it's a it's a it's an absolute horror show 
Well, it was it was great covering uh, today's event. We're we're doing more uh, field reports. We did uh, our live stream on Facebook, which you can view now. And hopefully, by the time uh, this podcast is is published, our other videos and highlights will be up. Yeah, definitely tune into that live stream. Um, you might have to skip through it because there's a few parts that are a bit dry, just a lot of marching. But and, and there's a bit of I I watched it back uh, earlier. I can hear you uh, talking to one of our helpers. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's uh, that's going to happen. Um, <laughs> we were passing it around so I could film with the gimbal and then, yeah, just to, to get the best shots possible, we had to budget our crew. and yeah. uh, But we did, we, we did pretty extensive coverage. We had two cameras and a, and a live stream, so we've got, got, uh, got plenty of footage and, yeah, we'll be putting it together in a good highlights package for you. Yep, you'll see that very shortly. And of course, uh, we aim to cover more events on the ground here in Melbourne. And of course, uh, next month is when uh, Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux come to Australia. It's going to be an oh, absolute chaos, isn't it? If it's anything like the Marlow event. And because this thing isn't really considered a rally, unless the police step up their security big time, like there's going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot more assault charges and scuffles and all kinds of stuff, just like, Milo, but I mean, yeah. we're hey. still dealing with the the consequences of the or the the Milo five were just before uh, court. Uh, uh, they they, uh, they only uh, succeeded in getting their the bail conditions uh, changed. But uh, as as I mentioned to to Neil today when I had a brief a brief chat to him, it's like just make sure you don't get into any more. Yes, he's got to be on his best behavior. We should actually have a poll. Like, do you think Neil will be on his best behavior for the Stefan and Lauren? He he was today. He was today. Relative, yeah, he was today, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, if you want to purchase tickets to the the Melbourne show, which we'll be at, or uh, anywhere else uh, in the in the major cities as well as Auckland, you need to go to Axiomatic uh, Events. Yes, Stefan is considered one of the top um, right wing uh, right wing libertarian commentators of this time. So definitely tune into him. He'll be saying some really interesting stuff. He's he's a historic uh, he's a history expert. And Lauren Southern, she's just finished working on a documentary in South Africa titled Farmlands about the craziness that's going on there with all the, the white South African farmers being targeted um, by militias that are almost like endorsed, though they are endorsed by the government to to steal the land and mm. commit atrocities to these people. It's, it's a really shocking. Sign for us all here. Definitely. It's a warning sign for the West in general. I mean, South Africa, it's a very... Like it's a, a westernized country. It, it is. It, it used to be, yeah. Um, but now look at what's happening to it. Uh, and of course, uh, we were able to bring you uh, unrivaled uh, coverage today. And uh, as we've promised, we've got uh, extensive uh, highlights. But we can't do it without the uh, support uh, of our uh, viewers, uh, followers, uh, those who support us on Patreon or via PayPal. Please, uh, please consider supporting us so we can bring you uh, more events uh, such as this and bring an alternate uh, perspective than what you'll get on the, the 6 p.m. news. Because we watched all of the, the reports uh, tonight from Channel 7, Channel 9 there, their spin on the rally. <laughs> Their spin on the rally. Yeah, their editing skills um, never disappoint us, actually. Uh, I think you should tune into Channel 9s, because theirs is quite quite hilarious. But, I mean, yeah, you make the most of it. Um, you, you just got to continue. You, you know that they're going to edit your um, edit the footage a lot, so you, you just got to get on with it, make the speech, say what you need to say, and just enjoy the rally. So make sure you support the, the independent media. That's right. We'll continue to report from the front lines of political activism in Melbourne. And of course, uh, another way you can support us is by buying uh, unshackled merchandise that we wear on the show. I, I'm able to fit into one of these jackets now. Which yeah, they're nice. cool jackets. You can actually, um, I'll just move so you can see it. Wait, hang on. Yeah, like this. I'm going to speak into the microphone. But yeah, you can wear it with a suit and tie and it'll look good. It'll look uh, acceptable. Well, I mean, not a suit and tie. I mean, like smart casual. You can wear it with a tie and it'll look still pretty good. 
Well, so reckon? I hope, yeah, I reckon, I, I reckon that they're, they're very comfy and yeah. definitely a worthwhile investment. Well, Absolutely. I hope you enjoyed our, our debrief uh, today. We'll be back uh, with the normal Unshackled Waves uh, podcasts uh, later in the week. Uh, uh, but for now, uh, after a busy day, we're, we're signing off. I'll see you guys later. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.